Hello mudlarking friends, you all noticed I am dressed like a normal person today. I'm not covered in mud and I'm not on the foreshore. I am in another one of those amazing historic settings. It's a livery guild in London. This is the worshipful company of Cutler's Home, Cutler's Hall. So we've got a mudlarking exhibition going on in there. I'm going to show you a few bits and bobs in there, but first let me show you some of the permanent collection items here. So they're pretty much surrounded by lots of things with a bladed edge. The cutlers uh, were the guild of people who produced items with a bladed edge, started off with uh, items of war, swords, and then they also make things like cutlery, surgical instruments, that kind of stuff. So as time went on past the 16th century, they started getting more into cutlery uh, and surgical instruments. But I love the surgical stuff, so come and have a look. We've got some lancets in here. These are one of my favorite things, actually. I always used to try and buy them on eBay. They're like bloodletting lancets. You can get veterinary ones or ones for humans. All these uh, things are lovely, but if you go around cutlers, you'll see lots of elephants around, and that is because, yes, the ivory trade. Cutlers uh, use a lot of ivory in their um, handled items but nowadays they support a charity called Tusk which um, is there to prevent uh, illegal ivory trade and uh, you know damage to elephants killing elephants all that kind of stuff and then we've got all sorts of ceramic handles lots of pretty things as well as kind of war implements and that kind of stuff so our exhibition today is knives weapons and warfare so let's head through there now and get to see them Here we are. There's the elephant. So Elephant Castle, it's part of the coat of arms of Cutlers. And as soon as we get in, we run into Monica Butling Smith. Massive array of things as ever. And this is like the only 30 seconds where you haven't had a mass of people around here. It has been quite fun. It's yeah, been, it's been, it's been yeah. good. Yeah. So you've got very various things, obviously following the theme of knives, weapons and warfare, although this is a meat cleaver. It's a meat cleaver. Well, I think it could be multi-purpose, couldn't it? If you needed to use it for something else, you certainly could. Yeah, I mean, this is... So you found this. Yeah. So, tell us a bit okay, about... So this one I, I really like because it was found near Henry VIII's habitualing yard. That's very so cool. So this basically would have butchered animals to yep. be probably salted and taken on board ship to yep. go to go wherever they were going, wherever trading were going. or invading or what, exactly. or both. And yeah. you can see it's got a good bit of age because you can see the forge lines and basically oh. this would have been um, a high carbon cutting edge and this would have been the heavy steel edge. So, uh -huh. so you can see the little like ring fuels in the metal, which is rather cool. Now we were, we were talking to Paul and that's what he yeah. said about the axe. My, okay, I've got one, I've got oh. one find in this exhibition. <laughs> my axe. <laughs> my axe. Had, we, we put Marie's axe beautifully on the, on yeah, the axe Yeah, and then we'll come, we'll come works, to the, yeah. the three axes. But this, he was telling me yesterday that it's a high carbon edge. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, what does that mean exactly? I don't Basically, really know. this edge here can be sharpened. It can right. be made incredibly sharp. Because of, but it, because of the high carbon edge. It's also a little bit more... Um, less, less robust. Right. So this bit here needs to be kind of very, very tough and hard. This bit needs to be sharp. That's what he was yeah. saying. It gets very sharp, but then it's brittle. So yeah. that's why I've got these. Chip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is people will remember. I hope when I found this, and I was very pleased with it. And everybody <laughs> kind of said, "Oh, they were nonplussed." You thought it was cool. Oh, I thought it was seriously cool. Paul yeah. <laughs> thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, and said if he uh, if he had it, well, I was thinking I might donate it to him. Ooh, but anyway, he said he yeah. might put it, he might restore it, yeah. and make it. Oh, that would be very cool. Again, anyway, if you, if you look I'm, I'm going to swing one, on. This yeah, one, so these are the actually, old ones. So you can see where the hard, where the um, carbon edge has actually broken off now. So we're oh, down to the, okay. the hard That's steel the there. So yeah. how's the carbon edge? Is it added or? How it's basically it? in the. I'm not a blacksmith. Yeah, no, no, but you're super but knowledgeable. <laughs> but I think it was done during the, during the forging process. So you'd have your main bit and then they add layers and heat and hammer and heat and hammer. Um, and this one's medieval, isn't so, it? So yeah, this one, you can see the maker's mark there. So unlike Amazing. Marie's, where you actually have names put in, mm -hmm. this is just literally two Strike bars. Marks. Um, some of the medieval ones have got like three dots. Um, I think I've seen so one like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So this one is kind of based on a Viking drop bearded one. Wow. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it, could, it could have been a war axe. Right. Um, or it could have just been 
Yes, well, just an axe axe. Yeah, it's for using. Uh, my favourite of your axes, though. Oh, this one is beautiful. I've the just Tudor restored it. Oh, the Tudor this, axe. Yeah, the restoration so, is gorgeous. So this, like, this was actually not found by me, it's found by David, but we were out on the same lock. And, and he, he, didn't he, he didn't want it. He didn't want it. He didn't recognise it. So, anyway. <laughs> But, so to be fair, it was absolutely covered in concretions and because I'm doing more on a weaponry, I am prepared to put hours yeah. and hours That's into right. restoration. I, sh I, should, does, I should say, yeah. this is your baby, yeah, really. Is, Cutler's Hall, yeah. we're working together yeah. doing hands on history, me, yeah. you and Jason. Cutler's Hall is your lead yeah, piece. That was my this is your, theme. and your yeah. theme, so yeah, Monica. So this, this, this made me very happy when he was like, I don't want to, I'm like, well, I'll take it yeah. and I'll clean it. It's and of course, gorgeous. once you clean it off, and it takes a lot of work to clean it off, you yeah. can see detail. Can you see this little wavy line down there? There's like a wavy line on all four sides. Um, so there we go, on all four sides. And they've also put a little bit in there, with yeah. an indent there. So it's actually been, they've bothered to make it pretty. Yeah. Which is just, yeah. why not? If you're hand making something, why not make it pretty? I so, think David. Oh, David. So, a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Here's David with a cup of tea for Monica. Thank Perfect. you. And so, oh, what else have we got here? Um, um, the eel fork. Okay, so it turns out this isn't an eel fork. What? It's a fish fork. Oh, so well, it's, still. But probably from the days when we had salmon. So, big salmon in right. the tins. The difference, apparently, eel forks would have bars down oh. the full length because eel and tend to be slippery. Wriggly and slippery. Whereas a salmon, nice four prong. Spirit. Um, this was found by Alan Sutty, and one of his things he absolutely loved was the fact it's been repaired. Yeah, that's So at one point, brilliant. one of the prongs broke off, and you've actually made the effort. It's far too valuable to chuck yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, of course, it. yeah. So that, that is really beautiful. Um, and I've got a sickle as well. Oh. Not for oh. war, but if you're Perfect. a druid and you want to cut your mistletoe. Yeah. <laughs> Or actually, if you just want to cut the small props, you would use yeah, the symbol. Yeah, lovely. So that's quite sweet. And then, is this um, your machete here? Oh, your machete yes, the machete. Blade. Oh, I love the machete. This I love the, the fact <laughs> that you have these like, dainty little things, you know, nice, pretty things, but you've also got like the real chunky well, kind of... No, they, you know, the thing is with the pretty box, I could yeah. spend a week talking about 500 different objects in there, yeah. and they, you could literally talk about a week for it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but this one is just... Steam. Um, probably 1800 to 1850. Love it. Love the lines down here. It, yeah, but um, it would have had a wooden handle right. as well, so you can see where that would have attached to that. Um, the machete would have been on the trade routes, so it would have gone from London, North Africa, over to the Caribbean. So that was for defence and attack. Defence was... and attack, but also for getting water. When you're pulling on your ship, you need to re restock with water. Right. There is always a port to hand. So, so you're you, chopping down. So basically, yeah. you come into a into a natural bay. Yeah. Go off onto land, and, and it's wooded like, or whatever. But yeah. this, is, this is actually very very easy to squish. It's, it's very light. Yeah. And I have a so swish. You can, you, yeah. <laughs> and if you can you could swish oh. that all day. Mind her lady just behind you. <laughs> that that is really Health light. And safety. Health and safety first. Yeah. That's super light. Have a switch. You've got to, you've got to really... Yeah. I don't want to get carried away. <laughs> I've, I've been with the swords <laughs> downstairs. Oh, <laughs> um, lovely. So wooden and there are the pins that go yeah. through. Yeah. So it would have finished there. Yeah. Lovely thing. So I, I, I love that one. That was a, that's a... And I've I told you that yeah, quicker. I've heard you telling other people. So it's a bayonet. Yeah, so this one... I don't know if any other bayonets have been found on the tins. Uh -huh. Aha! I, I don't know. Think I don't they know. Have, as far as I'm aware, um, this one I've compared it to every single bayonet in every single bayonet identification book going. I believe which that. Of course is I how believe you spend that. Your Sunday <laughs> um, yeah. It doesn't match size-wise any other, so um, it seems to be very similar to like Dragoon. Oh, use, okay. But it was possibly a commissioned oh. piece made by a private officer oh. with, with an income behind him that could afford to have it made. To his exact okay, right yeah, piece. interesting. So, um, yeah. You can see it's made out of wrought iron, yeah. not cast iron, because you can see just the um, the little striations running yeah. through. Yeah. So in the same way as you can see the lines running through that. Yeah. Um, so that is that is rather a special piece. I'm very very fond of that piece. Wow. Yeah. So is that one it would have, it would have um, screwed on? That's not the uniform he would have worn. Right. But, but that's you can the... see the the musket there, yeah. and then it would have just screwed onto the end of the musket like that. 
And this is basically because the British have a great love of poking people with sharp items. So from the days of pikes, we've always wanted to poke people with something sharp. But it's very effective, yeah. isn't it? But if you, you know, a musket, how long does it take to reload a gun and a musket and fire it? You just do the job. Yeah, so you, you have your one shot, and then if people are rushing at you, you're better off with the shot. To collect them on the end of yeah. your uh, the, musket. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's, it's quite a wow piece. There you um, go. And then we have lots of little delicate lots things. Lots of little well. lovely as well. Yeah, this lots. Rather cool. It's a coupling from John Wilkes, and right. it says Wilkes Liberty Forty Five. Okay. And John Wilkes was um, basically he was politically dodgy chap who right. uh, or insulted the king, um, and he basically the powers of Parliament wanted to stop people are owning property right um, and also they had a certain income so basically it's new to poor could own property right yeah um, and he basically thought property should be for everyone and yeah. should be able to buy so he um, had property he had property he got arrested because he insulted the king in episode 45 of his newspaper um, and as he got arrested locked up in prison all the populace rose up in arms and shout, went through the ship the streets shouting Wilkes at Liberty 45 wow. and that is a conflict with Wilkes at Liberty 45 which one of his followers would have worn, would have worn to a show. subtle way to show his mates what they believe yeah 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 so wow that's, quite, that's quite incredible fun. and it's such a tiny little piece yeah. you can barely barely notice it <laughs> Oh, you what about, about your arrow? Oh, the arrow! Oh. Look at the arrow! Oh my goodness! This is probably one of my favourite pieces. It's a Type 1 or 2 leaf arrowhead. It dates to about 1,000 to 1,100 AD. That's um, amazing! And, it, and basically this I found during one of the my exercise sessions in lockdown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then went back home couldn't do much else other than sit at home and contemplate it, head of Instagram, yeah. and was a uh, chap called him Sit the Shears, um, who is an arrow maker. Yeah. Um, he basically made me a replica. So you've got a replica of it. So oh. I sent him a mould of mine, yeah. and he made me an exact perfect And he's done, your, done the yeah. point on it. Yeah. He's, and is he's, he a Fletcher as well? He, he, yeah, he is. He's an arrow smith and a Fletcher. Fletcher. But, I mean, he makes everything from the, the point to the U body um, and so as a Fletcher, and the Fletcher does, yeah, yeah. It does the end um, feathers. These are uh, peacock with wing feathers. Oh my goodness. And they're called cinema feathers. Cause wow, the that's the colour. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. Um, so basically that's... Yeah. So, you know, you've got all the um, treasures. Yeah. <laughs> you've got all the war so weapons <laughs> and, and the thing knives. Is you should be happy with your own cards. I'm really happy. I love my own cards. Yeah, exactly. But then I love everybody else's as well. Well. So Everybody quite, gets fined envy, no matter yeah, what they've yeah, got, and they, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. You've got some lovely knives as well, and oh, This one is really special because it's got a wooden handle. Oh, oh yeah, um, that's pretty pretty hard so to find. So anyone who does mudlocking knows yeah. that if you get wood out of the river, it dries, cracks and shrinks by about 30 to 40 percent. And as a composite piece as well. As a composite piece. So basically when I found it, I had to take it apart. Yeah. I had to preserve the handle first yeah. and then preserve the, sorry, the, the blade first and yeah. the handle second. Um, this one had to go in special solutions to try and preserve it so they didn't shrink. Um, it was in a couple of pieces, so I then had to reconstruct the body. Wow, um, you've done an amazing job. So you can't really see where the knot wood is. But there can, I, can I hold it as well? Yeah, 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 absolutely. The only thing is it's still fragile, so you have to be careful not yeah. to dig a fingernail in it. Oh, right. Um, it's almost cork-like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you think each of those cells, the the content of the wood cells yeah. has decayed and disappeared, so you just have like the, the ghost of the cells. I so see. It's, yeah. It is actually very light, and it should it would have naturally been much heavier. But that decoration is amazing. So is that checkerboard thing? Is that yeah. decoration? Yeah, it's and the checkerboard wavies. wavy lines. Yeah. Um, it's, it was actually the handle was made in Holland. The knife blade may well have been made in Germany. Right. And it could have been constructed in England, but. Um, oh, and you've got a cup mark. mark. Yeah, that's a Solingen. I think it's a Solingen, early Solingen cup mark. So, wow. That's amazing. It's quite, it's quite beautiful. When that is an amazing that, find. Um, when it came out of its special bath, you had a layer of um, 
basically carbon dust on the right. cutting edge, yeah. which indicates that that is a high carbon edge. Again, like again, the axe. Like the, the, yeah. But it's a, it's a magical moment because as soon as you clean it with oil, the dust comes off. You never see it again. Yeah. But I've got a photograph of this dust. Of the dust. Because it was just quite magical at that time. That so, so I particularly love that one because that, that was my pride and joy to do it myself. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you've done a really good job there. So, oh, well, this one's very beautiful. This one, it's my, What's this? It's a little pen knife. So, a tiny little knife. When I found it, I managed to clean it all up. I couldn't get the blade to open. Yeah. So, my dear mate Graham yeah. said, hand it to me. So, Graham so I handed it to all. Graham. So, he managed to free the blade. He's wow. an absolute magician at freeing blades. He is, isn't he? He is um, the one. So, if I have a pen knife, I need to blade free on. Give it, always give it to him because find it's, a yeah, yeah. Well, basically find a graham. Sand, uh -huh. and if you're not careful, well, there's sand. So that doesn't go back in, does it? Yeah, it just sits like that. Yeah, it yeah, that's about 17. I was going to say 18, so, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That one, when I saw it sticking out to a mud, it was lightly golden in places and then brown in others, but it just it was neutral because of the fundy Oh, I see. So, you, yeah, you, you yeah, had that Thames gilding, did yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Wow. My goodness me. You could be here for two weeks. I could be still here. Chat away, so you yeah. Other things Maybe we should have just like a. We'll just <laughs> do a little overview, a little montage of music for Monica. <laughs> but thank you so much. Aww. We're going to go and look at Simon's stuff now. Oh, yes. I'd like him to demonstrate the puzzle knife. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me it right. See you later. <laughs> okay. So Simon, you're ready with the knife. Because this is my favourite of your knives. Well, Great. one of my favourites, if I'm not here. Um, just before you show me about the puzzle knife, I'd introduce you to, to the audience. So it's Simon Moore. You are, I've read somewhere you're the leading knife, ex folding knife expert. Is that right? The, could could, could be, be, well, some, the, these, these days. Someone, uh, someone, bit, yeah. But, so uh, folding uh, knives. But, but folding knives, eaten knives as well. Yeah. Um, and possibly spoons. Uh, Lots of books out there, so check them out. Any, 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 anything sort of eating jewellery. Okay. Like. Yep. But the thing you're going to show us today is the puzzle knife. So what makes this a puzzle? How does this work? Right. This, this was something that evolved, uh, obviously a, a bit of trickery. Perhaps the French call them secret knives, good right. less Uh-huh. Um, and they evolved in Europe around about the little late the late 16th century, the or very earliest ones. Yeah. Um, it's an example of a late 16th century one here, which is quite a simple example. This one is much more difficult to work because it's got a more complex mechanism. Okay. So, you have to look here, and you'll see a glove and a dagger engraved and the ball star. So that's a clue? No, yeah, that's a clue. A glove and a dagger. Because that points to, this is the ribbit here. Aha! Which is actually a full tree. Yeah. You, if you, Put your fingernail in it. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Twist it slightly out of the way. Yeah. So then you can pull this little pin here. Oh, so you're moving it and. Ah. Oh. Once yeah. you've done that, then you open the handle slightly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Then rotate the handle around. Oh. Out comes the blade. Pop that back on his little loops, there we go, to the locking loops. Oh, wow. Oh, so those little loops, wow, they were so dainty. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, there we go. that's it. Good. And so that's, yeah. that's it there. That's how you open so, the line. Yeah, and it's got a little man's head in grave dust here as well. Purely decorative, I suspect. Can I just look at the little pin? The, the... Yeah, sure. Oh, it's so, so fine, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's a bit square or rectangle, isn't yep, it? Yep, it is. Yep. So, Wow, and that. So that goes in here. Yeah. It then passes. Whoops. Through these loops here. Right. And those loops go into oh, these I little lost slots here, which are obviously inside, and that's how it locks. So it's a, it's a catch. It's a so, catch. Yes, it does. Yeah, it, it, it locks the handle together. So if anyone tries pulling the handle apart when it's closed, when the they, pin's in circuit, they, they can't, can't do it. take it apart. Yeah. May I, may I have a hold? Sure. Yep. This is one of my faves. And just under there, you can see, if I hold it... It's a beautiful one. In the little man's cred there. Yes. Um, and on the other side, 
hair in, the hand pointing her to that where the pin goes into her, it's a little clue. Oh, and a dagger. I love it. I really do. So it's it's 1600, 16, about 1600 circa. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a cutler's mark on it. I was just pity. seeing if it smelled of anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. The, the, wood, the wood's modern, it's restored. Oh, so, correct, okay. Graham restored it. Okay. Oh, so this is another one of Graham's restorations. So, so, yep, yep. Because he, wow. he was the actual finder of it. Oh. Um, and um, and, then, and then, then we did a little trade. You did a trade. So, what did you trade for that one? E. Good question. I can't a knife or a. It might have been a knife. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, he, he he liked the dining knives. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Which I also like as well. But, uh, they, oh, they're beautiful. I mean, so so you and you and Graham were mudlarking together, weren't you, for for a number of years? Se- yep. Seven, six, seventies, seventies. Uh, Latter seventies, early eighties. Latter seventies, early eighties. I was in the Porsche or seventy seven to eighty two. That's right. Yes, I remember. Wow. So absolute treasures that you've got here. So this knife in in God is all in God is all my trust. In God is all my trust. Fifteen eighty five. On the other side, I can get it out if you like. Oh, it says a trusty friend is hard to find. Ah. Uh, well, I acquired that knife in two thousand and three. So here we go. These are so beautiful as well, and here aren't they beautiful things? You all spoons there. A nice medieval one and one sort of dating from presumably around the time of Henry V. Yeah. And the little teaspoon dates from sort of Charles II period. Okay, so, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Always a pleasure. And um, yeah, Simon's got loads of books. Do check them out because they are some really fantastic, invaluable uh, pieces of writing. So, thank you. Thank you. Until next time. <laughs> Okay, so it's quite busy as you can see, so we're not gonna get in to speak to everyone, but we've got Gabriel, who's relatively new to mudlarking, but has some amazing finds. So you've been mudlarking, what, two, three years yeah, now? Yeah, pretty much. And you've had, so recently, what was that you were telling me yesterday about the best night when you had all the... Best night, yeah. yeah I mean, one night, I found a ton of things. My favorite find right now is this lovely piece here. Oh, the sundial. It's the sundial, yeah. I think, off memory, it was between 1580 and 1620. It was made in Nuremberg in Germany. Ah. Oh. Um, and it's amazing to think some, you know, sailor probably would have traveled to the Americas or to, you know, Asia or something yeah, like yeah. that with it. Because it was so hard to get your hands on, you know. So it was a pocket, a pocket sundial, exactly, really. Yeah. So like a timepiece for yeah. of of the time. Exactly. And then, so the same night that you found that, same you night found I found this lovely piece here. Ooh. It's an incredible seal. It's got a depiction of the Saint Paul, um, like the cathedral, oh, and then a city of London yeah. crest there. So yeah. These seals to show tax being paid in something, they'd be stamped on. And um, this is. Do you think this is a cloth seal? It is. Or, yeah. 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 Yeah, cloth seal. So and 1450 it's, uh, to 1550. And so, not so opposed to like a dyer's seal or a personal yeah. worker seal, that is the, the trader who was, do you think, the trader who was sending the cloth across or? Yeah, yeah. quite possibly. And yeah. then there, there was, was more. Yeah, I found this lovely <laughs> um, instrument here, this jubile. Oh, it's a medieval so, instrument. It's really rare to find them decorated. They are, and they often don't have the middle, the twanger. So, um, I don't know what the technical term for the yeah. twanger is, but so you've got the sundial. The bag, uh, the cloth seal, and uh, Jew's heart or Jew or Jaws harp, and then you've got there was more, wasn't there? Yeah, I, I found, <laughs> found some Roman coins <laughs> that night too. In the same night, ridiculous. It's, I mean, probably with my Roman coins, they're really not great condition, but I mean, even tiny little bits that kind of look like a scrap. Where is it? It's There's one of these. Here it is. Oh, huh. So um, hard to see a face on it. Somehow it's been identified between 330 and 335 AD. As wow. a Wolf and Cubs House of Constantine oh, Roman coin. Yeah, 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 and, that uh, makes I mean, sense. To my eye, it looks pretty blank, but uh, yeah. it's still incredible nonetheless. That you know, how anything amazing. that really looks like a scrap is still history. It's ca- exactly. I found something the other day that I had, sort of had in my scrap box, and I thought, oh, that's a tiny token. It's like one of those Powell tokens in 18, 1800s. Um, and yeah, so was that all for the for the bumper night, or was there more? Exactly, I was that was all. Was one night. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, that was one. Last night. time I was on the Thames, I also had great night lock. I mean, I found yeah. Um, oh, yeah. this lovely Roman game counter here, which is it's a two thousand year old board game made almost where they play kind of a gambling game. Yeah. Um, I got another one here. I also found this. Uh, Loves Samian lovely Samian wear. You find them on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but I'm really fortunate to have found a piece which has the markings on the side. So it says Remy and M. It could be possibly for Remigius, 
I'm not sure. I mean, I found this like a week or two ago. So you so haven't done the full ID on it. Research, yeah. But that, I mean, that is, that's a mega, that's a potter from yeah. 2000 years ago, pretty much. Um, wow. Amazing finds. Thank you very much, Gabriel. So you've got Jason Sandy behind over there, but he's got people there who won't go there. There's Rob Short here. Gail, I'm gonna put all their links in the video description so you can see all these people on Instagram or YouTube, whatever. Um, then we've got Rosie and Jamanda with some lovely pipes, but the person I'm going to <coughs> is the one and only, your friend of mine, Richard Henry. The reason, so people will recognize you, obviously you do your own videos. What's your channel? Rich, it, it, your YouTube channel is? Richard Henry. You just type that into YouTube and you'll yes. find it, yeah. I'm the one and only Richard Henry. The Pottery Doctor. <laughs> or Sir Richard of Henry, as I call you quite often. Um, so we, you, we, you've made, have you sold them all? Oh, you've got one left. This one I made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So you had, uh, obviously, your new book here and you've sold a bunch of them. You've got I one have, there. Yes. Um, I've the, met some great people. It's been a really good event. And this is a mega book that I've got a copy of at home. Yeah. Even so, I still do contact you and say, hi, can you tell of me course, anyway? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always happy yeah. for people to send me photographs and short videos. I love yeah. a challenge if in fossil identification. If it's clay, it makes my day. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you the best. I wanted to come and look at your deadly medieval yes, weapon. Yes, I know. Could you, um, could you tell us a bit about it? Okay, so this is made of antler, and it's the nut, which is basically the firing mechanism for a medieval crossbow. So imagine a crossbow, you draw back the string, and then you hook the string on that little groove there, and then in here you've got a metal iron stem which connects to the trigger. So when you squeeze the trigger, so you, the nut revolves in the crossbow and releases the string and fires off your crossbow fires the arrow and towards then. Richard III or whoever you're aiming at. And obviously when you found this, I mean, it, it shouldn't be like that. It, it was in one, one piece. Has it just dried I found out? It in two bits, oh, you found it in two? Yeah, sort of like that far apart. Oh, wow. I love that. It's so you've recovered them. eroded out. So yeah. the bit that was in the mud has been preserved and the bit that's been out of the mud was obviously has, gone. Uh -huh. um, but that's incredible. So it's, you yeah. know, antler. I mean, yeah, it made of antler, which is a very dense bow and very hard wearing. Yeah, and it's got a really good weight to it, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. It's got a lovely yeah, yeah. But the patina on it is um, Full gorgeous. size fish bay. Yes. Wow, so it would have been... I've it on the Portable Antiquity Scheme, but it's yep. the only one that's been found in the UK so far. That is very, very There's some very examples cool. in museums where they've had complete crossbows with the nut in them. Oh, right, yeah. But yeah. I didn't know what it was when I found it. I thought it was a pulley. And so, thanks, so, a pulley. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. You might, you might think it's boat-related yeah, or I some manufacturing or, or something yeah, random or like, like that. a homemade kind of... You know, yeah, well, anything, whatever you yes, need for. Yeah. It's pulling. intriguing me why it would have a metal and iron rod in the middle. Yes. Um, but I put it on Facebook, and then this German expert contacted me and said, "I know exactly what that is." The I was, power was, of the hive mind. It's great. Isn't it's it? um, yeah. yeah, it's really good. Good community of people. To anyway, yeah, this is this is wonderful. But um, so very ideal for our. Yes, it's the here. only sort of weapon Is thing I have. So it's not yeah. going to have a table for the broken bits of pots. I suppose you, you could hit someone over the head with a jug. You could. <laughs> or even <laughs> with a copy of my book. Or even so. with a copy of the book. It's very good. <laughs> Do get it. Where can people find it? Just on so It's your... available on eBay or oh, Etsy, right. or you can message me directly on Instagram Great. or Facebook. I'm out there. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, all right, so we'll see you. At the exhibition is coming up in your Greenwich with me, aren't you? Yeah, at the National Greenwich. Maritime Museum. I'm also at the Amphitheatre okay. at Guildhall. I'm yep. much everywhere in September. Totally so, Thames yeah. month. <laughs> We've got loads going on. So anyway, I'll put links in the video description. Thanks, okay, Louise. so okay. thank you. Thanks, Thanks for showing me that. All right, so last but not least, Jason, hey, my co-curator, <laughs> producer. So Jason Sandy, who obviously Either you know. Um, Jason Sandy. Jason Mudlark on yes. Instagram. 
So Jason, Monica and I run these events yes. together. Yes. And um, But also you're exhibiting today, so I wanted to ask you about something I keep wanting to ask you about. Oh, yes. Here it is. One of my favorite finds. One of your favorite finds. So, FireGuard hel helmet? Yes, correct. Is it try Can what I try it? Is it oh, tri yeah, yeah, of course. Is it try Yes, yes. <laughs> May I? Go ahead. Oh, it's heavy. It is very heavy. So you've So it used to have leather straps in here, and you can see where the chin strap yeah. was actually attached. Yeah. So that would protect your head, because when you put it on, it's very deep. So it's going to oh, yeah. pretty so much sink below your gonna, eyes, probably. Is it this way around? Is yeah. It? <laughs> so it would have actually sat like that, wouldn't yeah, exactly. it? With yeah, exactly. With a leather of, strap. Oh, it's funny when you're in here. It's, it's got this weird... It's almost like an echo inside. Hello. 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 Have you... Hello. <laughs> That's a really cool thing. So River Find. Yeah. And so when I... Did, oh, sorry. Yeah, when I found it, it was actually upside down like this. And I thought it was just a rusty pot yeah. or a rusty a bowl, bowl, salad bowl or yeah. something. <laughs> Then I flipped it over and I just couldn't believe my eyes that it was like in such good condition. Yeah, so because you, it's made of iron, so you'd think it rusts away. So you can see like the so red kind of iron, because yeah. iron finds are few and far between in any good condition on the foreshore, aren't exactly. they? They, they do yeah. rust up. Um, so I didn't know how to preserve. I asked several people if they'd be able to help me. And you can see it started to flake away and yeah. blister, which rust does over time, or it seal does, metal does. But it's been restored, hasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. So Ma Ollie Mudlark, who's That's here it. today, oh. actually uh, has restored many things for the British Museum, uh, Natural oh. History Museum, DNA. Uh, so he's an absolute specialist. And That's he restored this for free for me, which I was just so happy about. Yeah, yeah. So it's great that it's going to be preserved now for many generations to come. And how, how can you tell it's World War II? Or how, yeah, so I posted this online and many specialists said it's a Zuckerman helmet. A Zuckerman and it helmet. wasn't used for the actual troops. It was used for the fire guard. So like the home guard? Exactly. Fire guard. Exactly. So these are the heroes that used to watch over the skies of London. And actually you can see St. Paul's there. Exactly. And we're just about here, I think, in yeah, the picture, aren't we? exactly. And they saved St. So, Paul's from burning to the ground because it had a direct hit. It did, and here as well, at Cutler's Hall, yes. in 1940, exactly. they had the great fire bomb or whatever yep. it was. And yep. so, it was, so it had a hit on the side of the wall, took a bit out, but yeah. St. Paul's and Cutler's were saved. escaped. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so the fire guards, the fire did they guns. really used to go up here and stand I up? I know, I know. I mean, it Amazing. was like, literally, they uh, took their life in their own hands. Yeah. And this is the deadly Oh, shrapnel yeah. that was being uh, dropped or exploding over London. Well, this is ground. This is ground to earth, isn't it? Do you think yeah. these are ground to earth missile that we'd be firing? Yeah, up these to, yeah. were yeah anti-aircraft. So yeah. this is an actual fuse, oh. uh, and it's actually American-made, which oh, proves yeah. that the Americans were sending over military aid. Yes. So similar to what Britain is doing in Ukraine, Ukraine now. Yeah. Uh, the American troops were also sending over weapons to be used. So this is a fuse from an anti-aircraft uh, missile. So that's from the nose cone, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. And once I was telling someone yesterday, while you nipped out, to, you were having lunch or whatever, and someone was talking to me about these, yeah. these um, parts, the casings, and I was saying, I've got one at home. It's not Thames found, it was a okay. trench art piece. Yeah. But it, had, it was either manufactured here, had gone to Canada, or it was in Canada and come here, but it'd been refilled. So ah, they were refilled yes. and recycled. Exactly. And then Because they're so the heavy bottom, as well. Yeah, did you have the, the date? I had the date really? and I had extra notches. What was it like Mine 1941? Was Mine was, yeah. Wow. So then it had extra, so where you could see where it'd been made somewhere, yeah. gone somewhere else, refilled. Okay. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, so this was found by Simon Bourne from Sci Finds. Ah, everyone so he, knows Sci Finds. Yeah. <laughs> so he uh, kindly donated, not donated, Loaned me. Loaned me. Yes, very yeah, clear. Donated forever, thanks, Simon. <laughs> donated. Going to keep it now. He loaned these to me for the day. Just because I've still never found one. So this is still on my bucket list. Bucket list uh, And he's found a few. And he's actually uh, kindly put a top on this so yeah. you know so how you know, it looked yeah, yeah, before it was cool. fired. But uh, yeah, World War One, World War Two shell casings. You just reminded me of something else he's temporarily loaned. <laughs> down here, a bit of a controversial one actually. Yes. So I yeah. didn't know until yesterday, because I saw when he found it, and I knew, okay, there you go, the swastika. And there was some chat about whether it was the real deal or a replica, or also there were real ones that people would 
fudge the um, palm guard thing on mm. for the mar like to try and sell, make money. Yeah. So what did that turn out to be? So he says it's a replica, a replica, but still probably used in a burglary, <gasps> and that's why it was actually thrown into the Thames, the Thames because it does look real. So yeah. therefore, you can rob somebody if they think Absolutely. the gun's yeah. real, yeah, yeah. and to dispose the evidence, that's why they probably threw it in the Thames. And but also, he thinks it's a replica. I mean, because gun gun crime in this country, they sometimes do use old guns that yes. then get passed around from crime to crime because we obviously don't have easily accessible weapons. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of a bit of a scary one yes, from Sai. It so is. Thanks, Sai. <laughs> um, okay. So, anything else that we should? Yeah. So today I have oh. quite a few things on display from several other mudlarks that have kindly uh, loaned me their finds. Of course. And this is a stunning example of a Bronze Age spearhead, and this was found by Lukas Orlinski. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kindly let me use it and display it today. So this is an extraordinarily sharp still. Wow, and if you amazing. feel the tip and even the weight of it, it's quite Ooh, heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very heavy, yeah, actually. So it's roughly 3,000 years old, but that still in good shape. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. So thank you, Lucas or Linksky. I'll put your contact details in the video description. Yeah. Um, and some. Other yeah, arrowheads. Beautiful arrowheads. This one was Bronze found by age. Tony Tier. And oh, again, yeah, this is around 2000 BC. This oh, was napped. <laughs> and if I were actually creating this, I would have broken off the tip. So these are a tanged arrowhead with a barb where wow. the shaft used to be uh, okay. fixed to. Yep, yep. And you can just imagine again how deadly that weapon would have oh, been yeah. that was used for hunting or in warfare. Uh, but Goodness exquisitely me. made and just shows how. Uh, ingenious and how skilled these craftsmen so were So skilled. The, the napping is beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So thank yeah. you, Tony, for lending us that. And we've, I'll put your... And have you already had Dave talk about him? Yes, I have. Okay, so these good. are Dave... Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, he we hasn't. We haven't got him on camera, but these are Dave well, Maybe Hodgson's. you ask him, because that's his baby. I don't want to steal his thunder. Okay, all right. There yeah. we go. All right, well, goodness me. Thank so can you. I show you one of my other favorite yes. finds? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you put your hand out? Should I close? So the other way, we're going to oh. go on this. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is uh, an original knuckle duster from the 14th century from a medieval knight. And its real name is a... Gadling. Gadling, I yes, love it. Which its is the technical term for that. Yeah. But you can just imagine one of these spiky points on each knuckle. Oof. You wouldn't want to get punched by that. You wouldn't want to mess. Hand to hand and combat. There was something interesting about this. So in a in a painting of the black Yes, prince, so the effigy of the black prince, that's it, which the is effigy. a bronze effigy in Canterbury Cathedral. That's the one. Um, that is actually shown and he's got something very similar on his gaunt gauntlet. Yeah. And you kindly told I me did. and I did not yeah. know this fun <laughs> fact. But the Black Prince is the son of Edward III. Edward III, yeah. And his sword is actually right around the corner yeah, here. Just there. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually have a knuckle guard very similar to his and his actual and sword actual here sword, today. Yeah. So that was got made a good by a cutler. Black, Black Prince connection there. Yes. And he never became king. So his, his exactly. father was king, but he, yeah. was, he was really feared. So thanks for sharing that fun fact. Yeah. I did not know that. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, i better give you this back. It's very delicate, actually, it is, isn't it? Yeah, Even, it is. um, yeah, that's super, super cool. Thank you, as ever, Jason. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much.